same gallon jug that you use for RO. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're live, but nobody's here yet. Sweet. Okay. How do we? Oh, I see. I'm going to have to wear my glasses, man. I don't want to, but I have to. Why? Zildjian. Ooh. Hey, look. Tyler's here. Hi, Tyler. What up, dog? I'm new to this. Don't know what I'm doing, guys. <laughs> He's new. Give him a break. Is Tyler talking? Is that his voice? No. Oh. That's our voices. That's why you need headphones. Or turn the volume down on the stream. Okay. And the stream's not moving. And uh, just this better. Ooh, look, wobbly. Is that better? Let me see. Yeah, it's better. But the stream's not moving. The video's not moving. Mine? No, the, the YouTube stream. How do you know? Because I'm watching it. But I'm not, right? Are you on YouTube? Oh, shoot. YouTube. I got to be there, too. Somebody call me a god. Cardone Gaming, I love you. Oh, you know why it's not moving? Because some dumbass hit pause. Huh. So how's everyone doing? Let's get some housekeeping out of the way, guys. Little likes would be nice. Shares would be nice. And uh, when we get started in a minute, I will introduce... A special guest. Hi, everyone. All right. Can you hear me, Daniel? I can hear you. Okay. So can you hear me? I can hear you. So I have Daniel Anderson on, and Daniel Anderson is the uh what are you? You're the sole proprietor of Hypnotic Aquatics, is that right? I'm gonna try this with a headset. Okay. That does not work. <laughs> yes, you, I am. What do you hear? Out of the way, guys. Uh, I hear everything. All right, hold on. And uh, let me get started in a minute. I will introduce. So, can you guys hear us okay? JW has fry. Everybody hear everything okay? Who can hear what? Is there an echo or anything? Hi, everyone. All right, I'm watching. Can you hear me, Daniel? I can hear you, but I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm not very bright about this stuff. Daniel, turn your volume down on your, on the, are you watching YouTube or are you watching Hangouts? I'm watching YouTube. Should I be on Hangouts? Yes. Okay. That's the first problem. So turn the volume down on YouTube. Okay, well, I just killed YouTube. Is that better? That's that's fine. You can do that. Okay. Okay, so now we can just talk like we're talking, and everyone will be watching us. Okay. How's that? Or I could go to YouTube and turn the volume down. <laughs> yes. Yes. Basically mute the YouTube video, which is, yeah. All right, let me do that. Okay. Sorry, guys. He's a hell of an angel breeder, but not so much of a techie guy. Well, that's not entirely true. Yeah, because you do make some pretty cool stuff for your website. Yeah, you know. Okay, is that any better? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, Jason, you look great. Well, I mean, I always look great. I don't know, you know, what you're talking about. You're a damn handsome man, man. What can I say? All right, so... 
let's get started now that we've been putzing around for five minutes. So Daniel Anderson runs Hypnotic Aquatics. He is a angel breeder and a fancy guppy breeder. And he has created a brand spanky new website. And I'm going to let Daniel talk about that website. Daniel. Oh, is it my turn? It is your turn. Okay. Um, yeah, hi, uh, everybody. Uh, you know, I've, I've been fussing with this thing and fussing with it, and the first go around, it just wasn't functional. Um, got a lot of pushback about fees, and, and uh, I decided, you know, I can do a better job. So I, I rebuilt the entire site, and I made it free for everybody. Um, it's an auction site, very similar to the one you all know, um, which is a great site. I am not going to sit here and, and um, you know, try and compete. That's not what I'm doing. I just thought there was more room for us as breeders and as fish keepers to have a platform where we could sell our fish. Because let's be honest, tank race fish by good breeders are so much better than what you're going to find in your local fish stores. Um, now, with the site, there are paid options. There are paid membership packages that will give you more options, um, but it is free to everybody. Um, it's super easy to use, and I think we have all the bugs shaken out, but if we don't, I will shake them out, I promise you. So what's the name of the website? Finbids, F-I-N-B-I-D-Z. Dot com. So this is an auction site like that other auction site, the one that rhymes with Fakwamid. <laughs> and yes. there's nothing wrong with that website. Is that correct? No, I still use it. It's a great site. It's just it's kind of antiquated. I thought it was time, you know, to move into the 2000s. If that makes any sense, I just it's user friendly platform. It's uh, it's very functional. I've added a forum um, and I can add all kinds of cool stuff down the road as membership increases and, and people give me ideas. I'm not in this for the money, Mike. I'm in this for tropical fish hobbyists. I love the hobby. I grew up on the hobby. I've been in the hobby since 1972. And I just I'm trying to promote it. So, let's see. You're into the hobby since 1972, which, by the way, is the year I was born. So, uh, and so you created an auction website where people can go and buy or sell fish. Is that correct? That is correct. And they can, they can set up an auction or they can just do it as a flat classified at a set price. Um, they have the, the uh, buy it now option. Um, and it, it's not just fish. You can, if they have equipment, food, um, you know, supplies, there, there's a category for that. Um, I've added a ton of categories. And if anybody thinks there should be more, just let me know and I will add those as well. Me and Dwayne. Dwayne, were you born in 72? Was in in 72? What does that mean, Dwayne? Sorry. So um, back to the website. So what makes it better than the other guy, if we will? Again, I, I just, it's easier to upload your photos. You can upload video. Uh, you can do multiple photo listings. Um, you can have featured auctions. You can have top of category auctions. Uh, you can add HTML content much easier than the other um, website. So if you want to put your own HTML web uh, auction templates, it's super easy to do it. You just drop the code right in um, without any issues. Um, I don't know how many of you out there have have dealt with trying to put HTML or um, video up on the other site, but it's not always the easiest thing in the world to do. And it's easier on your website because it's more user friendly i believe so yes it's more current that's for sure 
Well, that's cool. So uh, if you guys, when we're done, or open another window and go over to FinBids and listen to us, um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty user-friendly. Um, it's, it's easy to use. I'm by no means a dumb guy, but, you know, sometimes as I get older, I don't know how to do stuff. And it was pretty easy for me to go and, and sign up, uh, you know, as a member. And after tonight, I will start listing my fish there as well as selling direct. But hopefully the FinBids website will be a platform where more people can see what we have. I'll tell you another thing, Mike, if you don't mind if I jump in. Jump. Um, I like the fact that if you go to the FinBits site right now, you'll notice if you scroll down, the auctions are actually listed with images right on the front page. Okay, it's not, it's not text listings. There are images right there on the front page. So you see what people are offering. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. So Dwayne Kitchell uh, asks if I've ha if you've had much response from other breeders. Well, Dwayne, I just launched today, so um, the few people that I I have in my close circle have been very supportive. Um, you know, Michael has known about this for quite a long time. Um, Tyler from Fish Freaks, and there's a few others um, that have been very encouraging. Um, like I said. The first time around, I got a lot of pushback about um, asking for a small fee per auction listing. Um, the only reason I was asking for that listing is so that I could afford to run the website for everybody. Um, so my other option was to do it the way I have. I offer that, like I said, a free registration and membership. Um, or if you choose, you can purchase a long-term membership package that will give you more options for your option listing. What are, what are some of those options that people can upgrade to? Well, like I said, you can it'll, you can have top of the category. So your options are going to be at the top of every category, sort of like, uh, you know, how Google puts paid advertised uh, links at the top of each search. Very yeah. similar to that. Um, you can have featured. If you look at, I posted a bunch of featured options today. So if you look, You'll see the little featured ribbon on the corner of it that lets you know that this one's special. Um, it's got, like I said, you can have HTML content if you purchase the upgrade. Um, and those purchases, those package prices, they're dirt cheap. So it's, you know, a month for $1.99, a year for what, I think $12.99. That's dirt cheap. Now, I always paid the percentage that the owner of Aquabids asked me for after each auction. But apparently, most people don't, I guess. So I must have been a sucker. <laughs> that would be my guess that most people don't pay, but... Um, so $1.99 for a month isn't bad. Are there any introductory offers? Yeah, I mean, I, I could give everybody here a month free with unlimited, you know, Potential. I could just open it wide open to everybody today. Um, that would be pretty generous. No, that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of guy you are. So, what what kind of fish uh, do you have up on the site right now? What do you breed? Well, I breed angels specifically. I also breed uh, show quality guppies. Um, I have not posted any guppy auctions yet. Um, I will have some up by tomorrow. Uh, I put up probably, I don't know, eight. Let me look. I put up a few angel auctions, uh, two, four, seven so far. Um, but I'll be putting up more, um, throughout the night and tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I specialize in angelfish, selectively bred angelfish. So we have two questions. The first one is from A.L., and he said he noticed there's no saltwater category. Uh, Al, are you talking about for auctions or for the forum? I'm pretty sure there was a saltwater category, wasn't there? Oh, there absolutely is. Yeah. Yeah. So, how is saltwater in Florida? Is there a big demand? Yeah, it's, it's probably bigger than freshwater. Wow. Yeah. And then Jason from 
Jadren Jadren Aquatics, who I really shouldn't be talking to because he likes Liverpool, loser. Um, he <laughs> says, wish you come up with the more universal shipping options. Figuring out shipping on Aquabids wears me out. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, I don't, right. I don't know. Go ahead. Uh, what I was going to say is that that's up to the to the uh, seller that they can whatever shipping option they choose. Um, the nice thing about this is you can put the shipping cost right there in the auction with with this site, so you don't have to sit there and go back and forth with with the seller and the buyer by email um, discussing how much shipping is going to be. Um, this way, a seller can put the price of the shipping right in the auction uh, as well as their payment the way they want to accept their payment. You don't have to use any specific payment program. Um, it is set up for PayPal, but you can use, if you want to do cash and money orders or whatever you choose, that's entirely up to you as the, as the auction list. So does the payment go through the website or you could do it however you want? No, it goes through, none of it goes through, none of that. That's all you, whoever you are listing. Gotcha. Yep. So we have a question about angels. To Ron Wiley says, can Rummy Nose exist with angels? Now I know how I'm going to answer. But I'm going to let you, the much more experienced expert, answer. Yeah, that's my answer, yes. <laughs> so my answer is they can. However, if the angel's mouth is big enough and the rummy nose is small enough, my guess is they're going to eventually be a snack. I would agree with that. As, you know, as, if you're keeping your fish fed and you're offering your rummy nose places to hide, um, you should be able to keep them just fine. But, you know, I've got some real NA that went through a dozen uh, neons the other day in about an hour. So, yeah. <laughs> wow, about an hour? Yeah, they were gone. That's, yep. that's pretty fast. <laughs> um, so, Aqua Apprentice, who I believe is from Australia or New Zealand, somewhere down there, says, is this just for the United States? No, I mean... No, if you can ship, you can sell. So somebody in, say, Australia can list something and sell it in Australia or buy it in Australia. And somewhere, anywhere in the world can sell and ship if they want to anywhere in the world. Yeah, I mean, as long as they, you know, make it known to the, to the buyers where they are and, and how they ship, you know, it's no different than... What they do on the other site, I mean, come on, look at Thailand. Thailand bombards that site on a daily basis. Yeah, they do. So Tyler from Fish Freaks Plus is having some technical difficulties. I don't know why I'm not surprised. <laughs> Tyler, turn, scroll all the way to the bottom of the, the uh, stream, and you should be able to comment down there. Or I think if you turn your phone, you'll be able to comment on the side. So, Aqua Prentice in from Velerco FL, FI, what is that? I don't know. Valrico, it's right up the road. Oh, yep. okay. Bye, Jason. Cole is in the house. Hi, Cole. How are you, buddy? Uh, Harold is from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. All right, so what else? How long? You said you've been doing this since 1972. What are some of your highs and some of your lows in the hobby? Oh, wow. Uh, Sorry. My mother introduced me to tropical fish. She was, uh, she was one heck of a mentor. She not only taught me how to keep fish, but she insisted that I learn the Latin taxonomical names of every fish that I kept. Wow. Um, yeah, was she was taking me. I'm sorry? She was no joke. Oh, no, she's serious. Uh, in fact, uh, when my father retired from the airport, she opened a, a retail fish store that did very, very well down here in Florida for a few years, and then she just kind of grew out of it. But um, I would say learning from my mother was a highlight. Uh, probably one of the worst downfalls for me is I was breeding uh, in Fort Lauderdale when I was stationed in the Coast Guard in Miami, and I had to move all of my fish to a storage facility because they needed to tent the townhomes. Um, and 
I was on duty one weekend. When I came back, I lost everything. Thousands of dollars worth of stock. So wow. it, was a, it was a big setback. That sucks. It happens. You know? Yeah. So, so a couple things are coming through. JC Tank says, how about a wanted category? Yeah, we can do that. Good idea, JC. Dwayne says, Daniel, a little off topic, but could you talk a little about your fish keeping heroes from the 70s? Hold that thought. Yeah. We'll get yeah. back. Dwayne, we'll get back to that. Uh, yeah. Turon asks, so just get bigger rummy nose? You could, if you can find bigger rummy nose, certainly get them. But I think the, um, the point is keep your angels fed well, make sure the rummy nose have a place to hide, and keep the angels well fed. Mm. Hey, Mark. Um, Mark from Mark's Fish Room. Check out my channel if you like fish here. Uh, you don't need to, to, to get people to go over to your channel, buddy. I'm not going to block you or nothing, but let, they'll do that again. That's your warning. How's that? Can you hear me still? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. So, Ryan, our buddy Papa Rhino, says, tell me about the tier packages for sellers. Hey, Ryan. Ryan and I have become pretty close lately, actually. Ryan's um, a, good guy, a really good question. He sent me some. Um, go ahead, man. Ah, Ryan's a great guy. He sent me some guppies, and they're fantastic. Yeah. Um, he, 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 he. Okay, so you start with a free listing. Um, free listing uh, is basically gives you video or image and video upload, but it's limited to a few images and, and one video. Um, the next one would, and it's also uh, limited as far as how many auctions you can post a month. I don't have it right in front of me. Give me a minute and I'll get the information for you. Okay. Give me one second. I can do this, Ryan. I can. Thanks. This is a great question. <laughs> Ryan, you're making, you're making them work, Ryan. No, it's no work for me at all, man. Ah. All right. So let's go to listings. JW. You're 21 subs away from 250. That's pretty cool, buddy. Okay, so you would start with your free membership, which gives you, let's see. Up to 52 auctions in a year, and you can purchase added listing packages uh, and upgrades if you want to, like, highlight a specific auction or something of that nature. Uh, if you go up to the um, the ripple, that's the 30 day. The 30 day. Let's see here. The 30 day will give you HTML content listing, so you can put in the HTML um, type auction templates that people like to use. Right. Multiple multiple image and video upload capability. Buy it now option. Visitor counter. And with that one, you get. Let's see. You get a full month's um, unlimited. It says 30 days on here, but it's unlimited. Um, I'll fix that. Unlimited for a month as far as how many options you want to post. The next step up is the 180-day or six-month package. I call that one the wave. That's $6.99 for six months. One second here. Oh, seven that, bucks for six months? Seven bucks for six months, man, yeah. you know that, that is pretty cheap. Yeah, that's really cheap. That's what I'm saying. It's it's a no brainer, really. Yeah. Um, that that one gives you up to. Um, also, going to give you unlimited. It says up to 350 on here for some reason, but it's unlimited listings. You get the HTML content, the multiple image and video uploads. You get the buy it now option. You get featured listing capability, visitor counter, and Google Maps. If that's of any use to you. That's pretty cool. And then the final one is what I call the tsunami. That's one year's membership. That's twelve ninety nine, and that one is again unlimited as far as how many listings. Give me one second here. That one gives you video, 
uh, multiple video, HTML content, so you can put your templates in, multiple images, buy it now option, featured listings, uh, Google Maps, and it'll also give you uh, 24 top of category listings. So you're getting a lot more bang for your buck. But, you know, I mean, even a free membership, like I said, is it's enough to get you out there. You know, you're going to have your image and your video capability. People are going to see your options. They're going to be right there, you know, when you click on the category. And it's it's just, a, I think it's an all-around nice platform. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to, actually this week, and I will definitely uh, be posting some videos up there. I think videos are better, especially because fish move so darn fast. So Papa says, okay, that's where I was confused. You had you had said unlimited, but it was saying 350. I might like to see a lifetime option. Oh, yeah, that's Papa possible. on his laptop. Way to go, Tyler. Go ahead. I'm uh, just saying, hey, welcome, Tyler. And I, I agree, I could definitely do a lifetime option. Um, I don't know what's happening here. I think I might have stopped working. No, you're still there. Okay. Um, hey, Tyler. But yeah, I can I can see that happening. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Lifetime members would like some kind of icon. Sure. Yeah. I like all your uh, your pictures and icons, especially your the finbids fish with the gavel. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I worked pretty hard on that. I like to draw, and, and uh, I had a little bit of help with that one, but I did the initial sketch. Um, graphic art was one of the things that I was pretty big into when I was younger and kind of uh, fell out of it when technology changed, but it, I'm catching up to it finally. <laughs> Dwayne, what do you mean you still with us? Who? Very important fish package. Very I like that. Yeah. So, why don't we talk about uh, what Dwayne asked for before, that your fish heroes in the 70s. Oh, wow. Well, I'm Burgess. I read everything by Burgess I could get my hands on. Herbert Axelrod. Uh, I grew up with um, someone that uh, some of you might have heard of, uh, Don Conkle lived right up the road from me. He was uh, he was breeding uh, African cichlids when they first started to hit the market in the U.S. in bathtubs in his backyard. And he would, he would bring them to my mother's fish store. Um, now he's like one of the biggest authorities on Central American cichlids there is. So th those are the three that really stick in my head. Um, you know, I, I haven't really followed. Oh, and of course, you know, Joanne Norton. Dr. Norton, I can't ever rule her out. I was reading her stuff from a very early age. <laughs> uh, so Aqua Prentice says, have you have any other big names involved other than the gentleman on here? I, I don't know that I'm a big name. I'm a big guy because I like to eat, but I'm not a big name. I don't think any of us are big names. We're just, <laughs> we're just guys and girls that like to breed fish and keep fish and we're trying to build a community so that we can, you know, have better fish than what's out there in the stores. And, you know, I worked for the farms. I know what the quality of those fish is like. Yeah. Yeah. I see some fish. I mean, I've talked about it in my, in my, uh, my videos, my local fish store, he likes to buy the cheapest stuff, which is why I stopped selling, you know, my, my nice guppies to him because you want to pay for them. So anyway, what else? What else do you want to talk about? You guys have any questions for Daniel being a angel breeder and guppy breeder? Hi, Luis. How are you, buddy? Thanks for joining. You still there, Daniel? Yeah, I am. Waiting right. for some questions. No questions. Kyle's Wildware. What's up, buddy? Can a 55 gallon be supported by two two by sixes and cinder blocks? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I that's, do it all the time. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how all my racks are set up. 
Um, who else had a question? Did I skip a question? Oh, I see one about tank mates for angels. Where? Uh, Tyrone Wiley. We read that one. Oh, did we? Okay. Yeah, the Rummy knows one. So, ah, okay. Majid asks if I've tried the jar method. So the jar method is Daniel's actual method. <laughs> so yeah. why why don't we talk about the jar method? Oh, dude, that's that's the only way I breed angels now. Um, I've tried everything. In fact, um, if she wants to go to my website, she can watch the videos. I did a step by step introduction to doing it. Um, just getting gallon glass jars and and some sort of a sump whether it's a 10 gallon tank i like sterlite boxes everybody knows that and uh you know fill in fill in the jar with ro water um three drops four drops of methylene blue anything more than that's just too much in my opinion um heating the water in the uh in the sump to 82 degrees setting the jar in it running the bubbles over the uh the slate of eggs very very gently and voila you've got Nice batches of angelfish fry. Yeah, so Majid, go to Daniel's either website or his Facebook page and take a look at his videos. I talked about it uh, a little bit in my videos, but his it's his method I want to use, so you might as well learn from the master. Um, so, uh so Ryan asked a question that's way above my intelligence level. It looks like it's Japanese to me. So which filial generation do I breed back to F0 to set in eye traits? Wow. Yeah. See? Yeah. Wow. In Japanese because I have no idea. He's, what's he's throwing big stuff at me. Don't make me have to go to the books, Ryan. Um, third? Third or fourth generation? That's it? That whole question and just third or fourth generation? I could have made that up. What do you want from me, man? <laughs> so JC's Tank says, I get maybe half or less angel eggs to wigglers, then maybe half those get free swimming. Is this normal rates? I get maybe half or less eggs to wigglers, then maybe half of those free swimming. No, that's not normal. Um, you probably have a lot of um, water issues. I would check for your, your uh, total dissolved solids, um, how hard your water is. And um, my guess is you're gonna wanna switch over to, to reverse osmosis and you'll get a much better yield. Also feeding your females a high protein diet prior to spawn will make a huge difference in the quality of the eggs. So you want hard or soft water for angels? Soft water, absolutely, uh, in particular for now, I raise mine in super hard water. You know that. I'm in Florida, man. I'm on a well. How do you, how do you uh, acclimate them to the super hard water? I do it over time. I start in that box, you know, in the video, how I show the, star, the Sterlite box. After they're free swimming and I can see them clearly eating and they're getting nice orange bellies for a couple of days in the jar, um, I, I release them into that box, which is also RO water. But then I start adding regular tank water to that. Um, and then over time, it's just you know, a matter of replacing it. And soon gotcha. right. A guppy question we're going to throw at you. Okay. Ready? Payman says, what's your experience raising albino guppies versus non-albino? I've heard albinos in general are weaker and harder to raise. My albino cobra guppy fry are growing at a super slow rate compared to non-albino. That's pretty typical, actually. Um, I have a hard time with albinos. I, I have a hard time with albino angelfish in general. Um, I will say this about albino guppies, two things. One, they are notorious for eating their fry. Um, and two, they are very slow growing. Um, so after like the second or third generation, I like to cross them the back into a larger strain of reds. Um, and I'm not talking about albino reds, but you know, uh, I only work with albino reds, but um, I like to cross them back into like just a, a red guppy and then work them back um, from there. 
because they do. They get smaller and smaller. Why do they eat their fry? I've heard a few different reasons. Yeah, I don't know. They're hungry. <laughs> so I've heard it's because they're lighter in color, so they're hard, it's harder for them to hide. That's possible, I guess. I, you know, I, I, I've heard that albino guppies have a hard time seeing, but who knows? You know, I'm not, I'm not a scientist. I pretend to be a scientist, but I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I'm just a guy. So Aqua Apprentice from right up the road, apparently, in Florida, are you part of any local fish clubs? No, no, I'm not. Um, and I should be. I should be a part of local fish clubs. I should be a part of the um, International Fancy Guppy Association. And I should be a member of the Angelfish Society. But no, I'm not. Um, and I have my reasons. I, you know, I, I'm just a down to earth guy that likes to breed fish. That's who I am. I love local fish clubs but in my area there there isn't one like right in my area they're at least an hour away and there's a guppy club that has a lot of older members who don't like change don't like technology don't like people that sell guppies yeah yeah so oh well yeah that's the problem i ran into is, is well not, not one of the plank owners and you're gonna have a difficult time yeah but I, there's also right across the river in pennsylvania the bucks county aquarium society i went to their auction they made me feel welcome like part of the family i had a great time i made a shit a crap ton of money and it was good that's awesome yeah so Sam Slate 2000, hello from the UK. What football team do you support? Let's start there, buddy. And JC Tank says, strangely, my guppies don't seem to eat their babies. You'd be surprised. Sometimes they had they drop 40 fry and you're then you see 20. You're like, oh, that's a big batch. And yeah, that's right. <laughs> it would have been bigger. Yeah. Bradford, where are you that the nearest club is four and a half hours away, pal? Four point four or five hours away. All right, so Payman says, will breeding sibling guppies cause a lot of genetic issues? It seemed like most people do this. You know, there's, it's not the best idea. Uh, you can do it. Um, I, I much prefer breeding back to the parents um, than I would to, to breed siblings, but you can. Um, that's why you have several lines of fish growing at one time of one strain so that you're not inbreeding that way. Inbreeding is always going to be detrimental over time. Well, Sam Slate 2000 can stay. He's a Man United supporter. So we, now that we got that out of the way, we can move on. I did see a question about what kind of guppy strains I, I breed. Well, what kind of guppy strains do you breed then? Funny you should ask. Um, I breed American Purple Deltas right now. Uh, I'm working with some green I need, females. I need females. Both my females died. We'll have to talk about yeah. Of purples? Yeah. Yeah, I got those. No problem. All right. I, some gorgeous half black blue deltas that I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm doing uh, my version of a yellow macare that we call a mellow yellow. I do tequila sunrise, but they're not your store bought tequila sunrise. Uh, I do. Um, my full reds that I developed from feeder fish, which are really cool. <laughs> and I'm, I'm working with some RREA um, red albinos. And then I have a fish that I created that I call a half black Mai Tai. It's an AOC. Um, you've seen it, Mike. It's that fish yeah, is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. All right. So that's it for now that I'm working with. We're going to have to talk because I. Just realized I think my female real red-eyed albino also died. But anyway, more questions. Bradford is in a rural part of Eastern Oregon. Sorry, buddy. Dwayne says, what size do you cull and what do you look for? That's a great question. A lot of, you know, I start culling pretty early, actually. I start um, just before dime size if I start to see issues with um, short gill plates, uh, ventrals, 
missing bent ventrals. Um, but I cull three or four times before those fish ever make it to market. Um, I, I'll cull fish at half dollar size if I see something that's not right about it. But that's, you know, that's the breeder in me. And what about guppies? Guppies, it's a lot rougher, man. If you're really serious about breeding guppies, man, you probably call 80% of the herd when you're breeding. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> All right. And Aqua Prentice wants to know about your breeding setup. Is it like a greenhouse, maybe a garage, or a couple other houses? What is it? Everybody wants to know that, Michael. It's secret. No, I have um, I have two 35 by 40 steel buildings on my property. One is dedicated to strictly angelfish, and the other is um, what I call Area 51. <laughs> um, that's where I do all of my, you know, special secret stuff that I don't want to tell anybody about until I fix the strain. Um, so I do a lot of my guppy breeding and my angelfish breeding in that building. Um, and then the fish that I'm going to be selling, I move to the other. Nice. And and do you pay for water down there in Florida? No, sir. No, I do not. I wish I didn't have to pay for water. I got to pay for water, though. All right. So Sam... My fellow Man United supporter says, I lost my seven-year-old koi angel. How long do they normally live for? I'm sorry. Say that to me again. Oh, I see it. I lost my seven-year-old koi angel. Seven years is pretty good. I've had angelfish live ten, um, but seven years, that, that's pretty good. I see one by Papa Rhino. By Ryan, that's a really good question, too. So when you're ready, I'll answer that. Is that the breeding room individualized tanks question? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Ryan says, does your breeding room do individual... In wow. Let me try that again. Does your breeding room do individualized tanks that are air-driven or a flow-through or sump? Nope, the first one. All of my tanks are individually air-driven um, with an auto water change system, um, and that's just smart science keeps you know if something happens in one of those other tanks i don't want to happen in it all i don't you know i don't trust uv i don't trust chemicals i don't trust you know, i'll use that stuff if i have to but i don't trust any of it yeah so when i started my fish room i had one sump for all the tanks behind me and i got a little uh, red worm and that when i decided i had to separate but auto water change, so that's good. And Ryan says, personally, he's air driven on individualized with sponge. That's the way to go. Right. Dwayne says, what water change routine are you doing, Daniel? What water change routine am I doing? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm a beast, man, because I have free water. So uh, it. For my fry tanks, I'm doing 80% every day. Right. Um, for my breeder tanks, I'll let them go a week sometimes without doing a water change, sometimes longer than that. Um, and then I'll do a massive water change. Other times I'll do 20%. It depends. It depends on what I'm trying to do. If I'm trying to get them really fired up, um, I'll, I'll starve them for a few days and then feed a high-protein diet for two or three days, then do a large water change. My, that's for my angels. Guppies. What do you think I do? Protein diet. Uh, blood worms, black worms, live brine shrimp, live stuff. Okay. And what do you do for the gups? The guppies uh, use micro worms I like a lot. You got to be careful with them. Um, I use a lot of live baby brine shrimp with guppies. It's, you know, especially during the fry stage. And I really like a product by Sarah, S-E-R-A. Uh -huh. um, it's a guppy granule. Uh, I've seen enormous fin growth using that product on my males. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for it. I've never really looked at the ingredients, but it works. Whatever it is. 
I'm looking forward to trying the Fish Reese Plus Guppy Flake that I ordered a few weeks ago, and apparently he was out of stock or something. We'll say Tyler. Uh, Kyle from Kyle's Wild World is using very big words. I'm going to attempt to read it because I'm not the brightest tool in the shed. So, has he ever seen guppies throw melana mel melanistic lines after excessive inbreeding? And how would you get yeah. a lone one from going melanistic? Is, is Kyle not from the States? No, Kyle's from, well, he's from Texas. Does that count? Yeah, okay. Yeah, is he asking if they're excessive melanin in the fish? Am I seeing more black in the fish? Yes. If, you, if you're going sibling to sibling for too long, yeah, I have absolutely seen that. Happen. Okay. And, oh, <laughs> FFP food. I got it, Ryan. Fish Freaks Plus. Man, I'm slow on the uptake. <laughs> Master of Angelfish says, how many angelfish can I have in a 65-gallon tank? Now, before you answer, I always have to say, it depends on how much work you want to do. Thank you, you have 100 if you want to change water a couple times a day or at least once a day. But a normal person that changes, say, water once a week, how many would you say in a 65? Man, you know, I'm on the same sort of principle as you are, but I know that the purists out there are going to say one fish for every 10 gallons. I don't agree with that. I think you could, in a 65, you could easily house eight, 10 fish as long as you're keeping it, you know, going, as long as you're taking good care of the nitrogen cycle and you're keeping the tank clean. Right, right. So I, the question I get a lot is how many guppies can I keep in a 10 gallon? And, you know, I look at some of my breeding tanks and there's a hundred. Oh yeah. Easy. I also change 20%, you know, water every day while I sleep. So it, it's a hard question to answer. Uh, I think one of the things too, Mike is, you know, I look at fish keeping a lot like gardening, you know, it takes years to get really good at anything that you, you know, practice, practice, practice. And, and at, at some point you're going to get to where you can just look at an aquarium and know if there's a problem and know that, you know, what that problem is and what to do. about it. Right. Right. And even no matter what your experience level is, there is going to be something you don't know. So. Absolutely. Anthony brings up a good point. Up to a point seems to me like the type and amount of filtration would make a difference too. That's definitely true. Yeah, absolutely. What a lot of people don't understand about filters is, so just because you have a huge filter in a tank doesn't mean it can filter a huge amount right away. Because the beneficial bacteria will only grow to the size of their food source, which is how much waste the fish is producing. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think, oh, I have a big filter. I can put lots of fish in there. And eventually you can. But not to start. All right, let me get off my filtration soapbox for a moment here. Uh, so, KG cichlids, I have a 30 gallon with at least 50 guppies, but 40 of those are fried. That doesn't count, KG. All right, Ryan says, I had a great debate with a friend on whether a koi angel is a phenotype or a genotype. What's your stance and why mine is a phenotype? And Tyler also says it's a phenotype. Yeah, it is. It's a phenotype. Oh, and why? What's the? Yeah, and and then because, what's the difference? Because it was derived from a gold marble angel. How's that? Okay, that's good. But let's back up for us dumb folk. What's a genotype? The difference between a genotype and a phenotype? Oh man, are we really going to go there tonight? We're going to go into a, a, a genetics lesson. How about a quick, easy one, like a dumbed-down version that I would understand? Okay, well, a phenotype is like a black angelfish, okay? That's yeah. a phenotype. A genotype would be what type of black angelfish is it? Is it one dose of the dark gene or two doses of the dark gene? How's that? That's good. 
I even knew that much. I think Tyler explained it to me about 10 or 12 times once. All right, what other questions do you guys have? I got to tell you, I like what Ryan's asking. Ryan's asking some legit questions, man. I think he's trying to stump me. Ryan is a smart dude, and he's yes, a chef. He is. Yes, he is. And he probably is stumping me. Who knows? It's been a long day. <laughs> Ryan has bread angels outside. I'm jealous. Did you? Did they spawn outside, or you just grew them up outside, Ryan? All right. What other questions do we have? Look at look at Daniel I'm just sitting there chilling, answering questions. I'm having a ball, man. All right. So so Tyler put it in really basic car terms for me, knowing that I work for a car manufacturer. Fino is a blue car, but Gino is a blue Ford Fusion. So basically. Gino is a piece of crap. No, just kidding. <laughs> All right. All right. KG says, is it true that your beneficial bacteria will only grow to the size of your bio load? Pretty much exactly what I just said, KG. You could yeah. have tons of surface area, only a certain percentage will be taken on. That is exactly right. And DC, who's, we're talking about some pink steel nebula guppies. How many guppies can one of those small dual barrel sponge filters handle? So oh, I, I think what I call the China filters, which on one of my videos, somebody got upset and every other subscriber told them to be upset. That's what they're called. So I happen to, I happen to have one right here floating in a tank. So hold on, let me get it. Of course, I can't reach it now. All right, so. See if I can do this without getting everything wet. One of these filters. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like the same thing we've been talking about. How many, how much beneficial bacteria can grow on that depends on how much. I gotta go get a towel. I'm still talking though. <laughs> um, how often you do water changes and what's in the tank. Certainly, if you had you know ten guppies, that would be fine. If you had a hundred guppies. It probably would be fine too, as long as you let the bacteria grow, the colony grow. Is that pretty accurate? <laughs> I would agree with that. The, the nice thing about those dual sponge filters is you can clean one sponge at a time. So right. you're, not, you know, you're never going to lose all your beneficial bacteria. A uh, hundred guppies in a ten-gallon tank, I wouldn't recommend that to a novice. Um, no. You know. Certainly not. Hey, Colin, my buddy Colin, who works in my local fish store, is an animal, but uh, he's in the stream. Welcome, my friend. And all right, Sam, good night, my friend. Thanks for hanging out. Hey, thanks, Sam. Yeah. All right, so Harold Bags, I once had 100 yellow labs in a 55 gallon tank once a week. You do an 80% water change with one sponge and a Fluval 306. Okay. Okay. So those sponge filters, you can also go to fishfreaksplus.com and purchase anytime you want. Uh, I can handle a funny amount of bacteria in the sponge. Yeah, so Dan, the surface area in that sponge, especially those sponges, there is a finite number, but I don't know what it is, and I don't know how you could actually define it. So, all right. Uh, Nicole, hi Nicole. Opinion on a nitrate reactor for angelfish fry tank if tap water runs high nitrates. I prefer a bear tank for fry and juveniles, so need options. Is that for me or for you? That's for you. Yeah, of course it is. Thanks. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> okay, so that makes two of us. Yeah, a nitrate, a nit no. Uh, you know what? I do believe in a bear tank, Nicole. And let me tell you something. Nicole's a smart, smart person. I've, I've read a lot of the posts uh, Nicole's put out. So uh, I'm not about to challenge her on this kind of stuff. What I will say is that bear tanks are always the best way to go with fry. And that um, if you're having problems with your water issues, I would switch to RO. And, you know, a lot of people will tell you to mix the RO. 
I don't. I use straight RO, and I have a lot better yield with straight RO. So, so seriously, Nicole, if a nitro reactor is what I'm thinking, the tower with um, lots of anaerobic, I think that's anaerobic, yeah, bacteria, so it, it takes care of the nitrate. I don't know what size tower you would need if it would make sense. However, if you have high nitrates, it might be your only option other than buying water. So, um, all right, Aqua Preda says, since we're talking about filtration, what is the reasoning between wanting water to cycle through a tank three to five times? You got that or you want me to do it? I don't even see it, let me read it. Who's, who said that? Aqua Preda. You take it while I find it. Okay. <laughs> So you want the benef the water to be in contact with the beneficial bacteria. That's why you want it to flow. Kind of simple, yeah. Um, some people say the more flow, the better. At some point, the more f if there's too much flow, that water is not going to get in contact with the beneficial bacteria long enough to do anything. So you don't want to, yeah. What'd you say? I said, yeah, it would actually be detrimental if, if water right. flows too much. Right, right. Um, all right, let's see. What method would you guys use to euphanize a sick guppy? <laughs> you want to answer that or you want me to answer? Um, I can answer, but then you can answer. I mean, I, I would smash it. I don't know. You know <laughs> you put it out of its misery, misery quick. Depends on what kind of sick it is. If it's like a disease or a parasite, yeah, I'm just gonna dispose of it. A lot of people like clove oil. Um, I use, I fill five gallon buckets full of ice water and my culls go right in the ice and it's instant. So I don't feel so bad. <laughs> That's nice. Did I see Rich's fishes in the stream? I Rich think you did. Rich must be done working on his kitchen. That that kitchen is fantastic, Rich. I love it. All right. So, yes, the tower. Nicole, if you could build a tower long, high enough or filled with enough material, yeah, if that's your only option, that you got to try it. They're not that expensive to build. Um, I think you can use lava rock and, you know, like, three or four inch PVC pipe and just you just need a pump to pump it up to the top. Hey Dwayne's got a question about free uh, me feeding fry. About feeding fry. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hit it. For the first week I will feed the fry twice a day um, heavily uh, with live brine. Um, I give them enough time to eat then I siphon off about 80% of the jar, maybe even 90% of the jar. And I replace that jar with, you know, that water in the jar with RO. At about two weeks, I will feed them three times a day, not as often or not as much. But I will also fast them twice a week. And I have found, and call me crazy, because most people do, that when I fast my fry, they grow faster. Don't know why, don't know if it's true, could be imagining it, but it sure seems like it's happening, so that's how I do it. <laughs> All right, so um, that's interesting. I've never, I've never done the fasting fry method to get them to grow. <laughs> um, so Ryan Papa Rhino says he does 90% water changes on a distance tanks daily. Wow. <laughs> He calls it the lying flat method, which is exactly what I was going to ask him. How do they, how do they swim in that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, Payment says I lost two guppies in a week. Both had bloated chest, weren't eating, hardly swimming. Any ideas what happened? Worms. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Worms are pretty common, internal parasites, pretty common. How do you treat internal parasites in your fish room? I use ivermectin, but not everybody can get ivermectin. Um, and it has to be ivermectin in solution. Um, I know you guys, have, most of you guys use, I never pronounce this right, is it Levam? Le you say it. Levamisole. Thank you. 
that's a very, very common dewormer. It works very, very well. Yeah, I, when I had my worms, I reached out to Cora from Aquarium Co-op who suggested I reach out to, why well, can't I remember his name? I can't remember his name now. He's in Denver. Greg Sage. Wow. Select Aquatics. And so mm -hmm. I reached out to Greg Sage. He sold me some of Amosol, gave me his uh, dosing instructions was on his website, and it worked. Um, yeah, the other one, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I've, I've been reading a lot of uh... Dude, am I still with you? Yeah, yeah. I just lost power again. Oh, nice. You're still can with me. Can you see me? I can't. I don't know how if I can see you. Hold on. How about now? Yeah, you're... You, no, not really. All right, hold on. Okay. It might be over for me. <laughs> We've had bad storms all night. Okay, well, while you're working that out, I'm going to talk about uh, other dewormers. So, um... Yeah, when the one I was going to... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Dwayne says Prazi Pro. Um, I think Rich uses Prazi Pro. I've never used it that I can remember. And Dan C says, "What about dog dewormer?" Um, Dan, I tried fenbendazole, and the problem with fenbendazole is you have to dissolve it first. It's not really a problem; it's just a little bit more difficult. Um, and it seemed to work for some of the fish, not all of them. So uh, I do still have it in the fish room because I didn't use it all. You basically can go to PetSmart or Petco and go to their deworming section and look for fenbendazole or something that has fenbendazole in it. Uh, Jan P says, how do you even know your fish have internal parasites? So what signs do you look for? Well, the first one you want to look for is, is around the anus. Do you see anything protruding? Um, a lot of times um, you're going to see multiple worms protruding from the anus. Um, second, they'll begin to bloat, or they'll just start to wither away. Um, you'll notice them get, you know, real skinny. So those, those are dead giveaways. They, you know, they'll, they'll lay on the bottom, or they'll isolate themselves from the rest of the fish, the rest of the guppies in the tank. Those are all things I look for. Uh, so I think you need to, to restart to... Uh like log out and log back in because we don't see you anymore. We only okay, see bear, your bear weird picture. Okay. Um, Rich says, where to go, Rich? Prazzy's in Genicure. I think you're right. I think Genicure is Prazzy and something else. I could go look, but it's all the way over there. So Ryan says, goat dewormer. Yeah, I've heard of goat dewormer also. I just don't remember... Maybe it was the as well. My my best friend growing up owns a, a very large pet food store up in North Jersey, and he was talking to me about goat dewormer, and I never really got into it because I got the Lavamisol before we finished talking about it. So, am I back? Are you back? Let me see. I don't think you're back. I see oh, you're back. Hey, I'm back. I was going to tell you, I've been doing a lot of research and reading a lot of papers. Believe it or not, bleach is being used a lot now for deworming in the, at the big farms, but you've got to know how to do it. So I'm not recommending that. I'm not telling people to do it. But bleach in a very, very mild solution um, has shown a lot of promise. <clears throat> so um, bleach, huh? No. I kid you not. Really? Yeah. I read all the weird stuff, man. I, I love to read. I read anything I can get my hands on. I don't know. Uh, that's that is weird. Yeah. All right. Ryan says bleach at a rate of one twenty ninth parts per million. How do you even measure that, man? Science. Yeah. <laughs> So, Rich, Harold Back says that you're going to be working on the bathroom soon. Do you want to, you want to go there? or I want him to finish all his renovations so I could go up to where he lives, because he's only a few hours from my house, and help him build an auto water chain system. That's what I want to do. So, Luis says, fish for low water pH. How low is your pH, Luis? 
and then we can go there. All right. So we've been going for about an hour. You want to hang for some more, or me? Yeah, if I can get back up. Yeah, I'd love to. Are you up? I'm not. Is your up. power? Oh, look, there I am. Yeah. Is your power back? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just waiting on. Got some down there. So I don't see. I don't see the chat. Are you in YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Well, keep looking for it. But Luis says his pH is 6.8. That's not really low, Luis. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I. You could probably do pretty much every fish in that. At least that I keep. Live bears, um, angels, rams. <laughs> uh, most any fish. Yeah, so I don't know about Africans, like uh, Tyler said, but so overtime, Victor. Yes, sir. We're going to overtime. <laughs> I don't know what's going on on my end, man. I, I, I don't have any chat room, so should right. I log out and log back in? Uh, if you want, I can just read questions. It's not that big yeah, a deal. That's fine. Let's just go that route. What, um, how do you light your tanks? How do I what? Light. Oh, light, like light lights? Like, I use shop lights. Yeah, like LEDs, fluorescents, just the room light. I uh, the only light in my in my fish room is the shop lights. Yeah. Are they LED? No, they're not. They're fluorescent. I bought some LEDs, but they're crap. Um, I would like to switch over to LED eventually because it's going to save me a ton of money. Yeah. Um, but but when I when I built it, I wasn't thinking the way I should have. I guess you know I was on a budget and shop lights. Sure, sure. I have one shop light, you know, that kind of lights the room, and then there's LEDs for everything else. And the other thing is my, my fish room gets a lot of natural daylight, so. That's good. It looks like I have at least two pairs of angels I'm, I'm looking off over there that are either spawning or cleaning slate, getting ready to spawn. I guess I got to go buy some pickle jars. Yep, yep. It'll help. I'm telling you, try my method, it works. Yeah. I just gotta, I just gotta get all the stuff. It ain't hard. Eat some pickles. <laughs> so Wayne says, easiest way to get rid of brown algae, full spectrum LED is on four to six hours a day. Whoa. Are you a plant guy? Me? Yeah. Eh, you know, I, I have um, my home aquariums, the ones in the house I have heavily planted. Those are on LED. Um, that sounds like a lot of diatomaceous algae. Um, is he by a window or anything by chance? So Wayne, are you by a window? And do you add fertilizer or anything like that? Let us know, and we'll get back to you. Uh, Papa Rhino says, do you do any plants in pots with bare bottom tanks? You know, I don't, but a lot of my friends, angelfish breeders do, to control nitrates, and... Um, they're very successful with it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't because I have, like I said, free water. So I can keep the water moving all the time. I don't have nitrate issues. Yeah. yeah I have plants in all my library tanks for obvious reasons. Um, but then, yeah, I do lots of water changes to control that other stuff too. But um, I've tried the, the plants in pots, and I always just made a mess with them. So. <laughs> I just throw floating plants in there and don't have to worry about it because I don't care how they look. I know Rob uh, Rob Barnhart. He, he's big on plants in his tanks. I've seen him in his fish room. That guy brings wicked nice fish to me. Uh, yes, Tyler has been telling me for four months to go to your pickle jar method. And I will. I just got to work it out. Maybe I have th three pair over there. Looks like the koi's are doing something too. All right, sorry. Yeah. Uh, where are we? Anthony switched to LEDs and loved it. Did how much of a power usage? What's the question I'm trying to ask? This would be a great blooper because that was a brain fart. How much power usage did you see a difference? 
That doesn't make sense either. That's like a Japanese translation. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Please tell me you do. I know what you're trying to say. So, Anthony, what's the difference in power usage between LED and whatever else you were using? That's that that'll work. There you go. Man, that was way more difficult. Way more difficult. Yeah, yeah. Dwayne just says, "How much are you saving?" Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Daniel, you have to have some oddballs in Area Fifty One. Telocyclus. I can't even read them. Uris, 20 inch Dovi? I'm sure he doesn't have a Dovi. Who is that? Who's asking that question? Dwayne Kitchell. All right, should I? Is Tyler still there? Tyler is still here. Tyler, should I, should I tell him what I'm working on? Yeah, Tyler, should he tell him? Should he tell him? Good night, Aqua Apprentice. Daniel has none of those. Yeah, he doesn't. But should he tell him what he does have? Hmm. Good mm. question. Yes. Tyler says yes. Well, Tyler and you have both seen a few pics, I believe. Uh, um, I've been working on a half black koi age. And when I say half black koi, I mean blacked out from, you know, the, the second half of the hemisphere. Did I saw a picture of those things are yeah. gorgeous. Um, and I'm trying to fix the screen right now. And if I do that, I'm telling you guys, this is going to be the fish. And eventually what I'd love to see is half black, half red or orange. Sorry, I was just reading a work email. I saw a picture. They are fantastic. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, Anthony, after all that, see you, Rich. After all of that, me blabbering about how to answer the, or how to ask the question, almost none, he says. But he only, <laughs> has, a, but he only has a few tanks. <laughs> Ryan wants on the waiting list, and Tyler's claiming he's first. Yeah, he is. I'll put you and, on it, Ryan. No problem. And the code is flipping out. Of course, I'm on that waiting list also. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. All right. Heyman wants us to go back to the guppies and says some people claim their guppies live up to 24 months, but that depends on the temperature of the water to slow down their metabolism. What's an ideal temperature if breeding is not your priority? 78. Yeah, I would have said, you know, 76, 77, but yeah, that's about right. Any of them? Two years. No. My, my, Tanks are like 76, 77, and I breed in them all the time with no problem. I have several guppies that are more than two years old, several several trios that are more than two years old. Um, that, that's pretty good. Yeah, I wouldn't breed them anymore, but I have them. Uh, oh, they're talking about what? Uh, so, so somebody asked April what state she's in, and I'm like, I. I've said I'm in New Jersey, but it wasn't me. It was April, so yeah. All right. I think we should start to wind down because, to be quite honest, I'm pretty tired, and I still have to feed the fish room. I breed in 72 degrees, no problem. Breed yeah. What, breed what in 72 degrees? Guppies. No. No. I don't think so. So Joel from lovely New Zealand is here. Hey, buddy, how are you? Uh, do, 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 do. No window is blocked and plants are artificial. Oh, Wayne says. Oh, so Wayne, we were talking about the brown algae. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't have a window and the plants are artificial, so he's not adding anything else. He's overfeeding. Yeah, probably overfeeding. But I wonder if it's getting light from somewhere else. Well, that's what, that's the only other thing it could be. Right. Yeah. How often, do you, how often does he clean his filter media? Clean his filter media? Uh-huh. So, Wayne, how often do you clean your filter media, and how much and what do you feed? What's in the tank also? Let's start there. So, Mr. Tyler from Fish Freaks Plus 
just mentioned, if you go to his website, which is fishfreaksplus.com, and use promo code MFR, you save 10%. That's pretty good. Jim Vlogs, the website that we were talking about is finbids.com. Go check it out. Please, check it out. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. I will have a new video tomorrow. Maybe we can talk Daniel into making a video again. He made like three and then quit. He said it was too hard. <laughs> it's not what I said. I know, but it was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, check out finbids.com. Check out fishreefsplus.com. You can email me directly at michaelsfishroom at gmail.com. And if you have any questions or you want to buy any of my fish, and this weekend I'll be putting up some auctions on Finbid. So go take a look. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for hanging out. I will. Yeah. yeah. yeah we'll see you around and uh, check yeah. out tomorrow's video. Peace out. Bye, everyone.